Welcome to the Women Who Change the World podcast, the place where everyday women world changers share their stories to inspire, challenge, and equip you to change your world. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Women Who Change the World. I am your host, Samantha Hatcher, and I am here with my friend, Myrna, and we are going to talk about social media. We're going to talk about engaging in social media. And she's probably going to smack me around because my engagement is uh, not as good as it used to be. I'm not paying attention. I might be hiding under my table by the time we're done here. <laughs> How are you, Myrna? I am great. How are you? I am good. I am ready to go on vacation this weekend. Yay! I'm looking forward to that. So let's get into it. Let's tell everybody what I already know, how amazing you are, <laughs> and um, talk about the challenge that you had to overcome to be what, to do what you do of coaching people, especially in direct sales of how to use social media. Oh, wow. Well, thanks for having me, Samantha. Um, I think that the thing I had to overcome was me. So I was thinking about this this week. I attended a funeral of a friend of our families, and I had the embarrassing opportunity <laughs> to see a friend. Mm -hmm. which is this guy's sister that I had sent a spammy message to seven years ago and she shut me down and I haven't talked to her since because it was just a one you know what it felt like mm -hmm. the door slammed in my face so I did those things I got the door slammed in my face and I whimpered back to my corner and <laughs> stayed there for a long time. And then I learned a better way. And when I learned a better way, I saw all these messages coming to me and other people. And it really kind of makes me hurt for people because I know there's a much simpler way, a much better way that they could be doing things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I also know the pain they feel when the door slams in their face, wham, and they whimper back to their corner. And that's why I help others with their social media, because nobody needs the door slammed in their face. And no one wants to feel the slime dripping off of them after they've gotten a message or sent a message to someone. So that is how I got here. So what is the worst message you've ever sent? Oh, the and worst. the wording, the wording, do you remember the wording? You know, the message that I sent this gal, I think one of the, it included a phrase that really bothers me now. <laughs> and it was, can you help me? I'm in business and I'm asking someone to help me. Mm. So, so I'm asking someone for a sale by saying, can you help me? And I've learned, so that is really probably the worst thing I've sent. And I've sent it to a number of people. But really, as a business owner, mm -hmm. we're offering a service, mm -hmm. a product. So we should be helping the customer, the client versus them helping us. So my philosophy has changed hugely mm -hmm. from please help me to how can I serve you? I saw a great quote earlier today and it says selling is something you do for someone not something you do to them that is so true it's ed de costa is who it comes from i am um, that is that is some of the things that you and i've connected on is that it just oh oh the, the, that icky messaging so i know the answer to this because you talked <laughs> about it recently but what is the worst message you've ever received and how did you deal with it? 
Oh, wow. I got one this week. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'll use that because it just kind of floored me. Um, I got a message from a gal and she was very sincere and she basically vomited her information on me. Mm -hmm. It was a long message, all of her skills, all of her wonderful things and how she could help me but she never asked me if I needed help. <laughs> so the, she just re went right in. This is what I do. This is how I did blah, 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 blah. And, and that was it. And that is the hardest message to get. I think for me, because I just, it, it kind of turns your stomach or also just getting the worst one is probably by my stuff. Hey girl. Hey girl, that one kind of sends me over the edge. Hey girl. I send that to my friends. <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> if I got a hey girl message from you, I would know you were not trying to sell me something. Oceanfront property in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> or that bridge. <laughs> uh -huh. The bridge to nowhere. Yeah. Well, I have sent the vomit message because somebody asked, so what do you do? And it's like, this is what I do. And the dead silence. Yep. How do I revive that? Um, the best way to revive it is to apologize. Just to step right up and say, oh, you know what? I am so sorry I did that to you. I realize now <laughs> that that's not what you were asking and maybe they were asking, what do you do? But there needed to be more conversation. And so to revive it, you apologize. And then you start asking them questions. Well, she was asking me about my services that I provide. Mm -hmm. And so it was a, a post that I had written about. These are the services I provide. I sent that to her. There were two things going on. One, I think I overwhelmed her too. Her son was getting married the next week. <laughs> so, um, but I've tried to revive it by asking her how the wedding went. Mm -hmm. But now she's ghosting. Yes. And that's, you almost have to revive it immediately because mm -hmm. um, they just walk away. It is mm -hmm. what happens. People walk away from that conversation, just like the friend that I poof, sent that message to and said, can you help me? <laughs> and it's like no more conversation. And it's been seven years. I looked back yesterday. Wow. Mm -hmm. How did the conversation go with her when you saw her? I didn't get to speak to her because it was her brother's funeral. So she was, there were hundreds of people there. So mm. Was it you didn't get to speak with her or you went out of your way to not to make sure you didn't speak with her? Well, the actuality is I didn't get a chance because they whisked the family out to the vehicles right away. Mm. But um, I didn't stay for the meal afterwards in the fellowship where I could have spoken to her. <laughs> yeah, that happens. I mean, as you know, I'm an introvert. And start, I can start a conversation with anybody face-to-face, -face, even like through Zoom, but that, that messaging where it's easy to misunderstand what people say, uh -huh. because Definitely. there's not, you can't see my body language. You can't hear my voice, even in like over the phone and in voice messaging, it's still hard to do uh -huh. that. It is. Um, to the point where it's like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And, and, you know, we've had this conversation a, we lot, have. <laughs> a lot. Um, so tell them the things that you have told me that I'm still going to you about. Yes. I stuck my tongue out at her. <laughs> she does that on occasion and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I blame my children. <laughs> You are like the, most, the five people you spend the most time with my children. So there. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that we've talked about that you've not been real excited about doing 
is to post what I call general engagement posts. Mm -hmm. And those are what you call. Um, what, what small talk conversation. Yeah. A waste of time. A waste kind of, of time. Stuff. It's yeah. And in reality, those engagement posts are how you build the no like, and trust factor with your potential clients and customers. So it's a way for you to get to know them, them to get to know you. And yes, they seem silly. What's your favorite cookie? What's your favorite pie? <laughs> Those seem silly, but you, when in a conversation, let's just back up a little bit in a conversation, you, you start way over here at just the most um, low, I'm trying to think of the right word, the lowest um, form of question, mm -hmm. because you don't want to start over here with, um, in the middle of a conversation, you don't want to start there and basically skip over to third base and say, well, let's go have coffee when you haven't even asked them their name or asked them about their kids or gotten to know them and them you on the most basic level. Because when you run into someone, let's say you're in line in the grocery store. This mm -hmm. is my, because this happens. It used to anyway. Um, and I call it a tap on the shoulder because we sort of do that mm -hmm. when we see somebody who has shoes that we love, right? Or something on the conveyor belt that you wish you had picked up yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And you say, oh my gosh, what is that? Or where did you get those shoes? I love them. And that is the most um, unintrusive. That's the word I was trying to think of. Mm -hmm. Intr you don't want to use intrusive things in the beginning of a conversation because you're, you don't even know if you want to have a conversation with me. Mm -hmm. You have got to slowly work into those conversations and by, I swear my phone's on do not disturb. <laughs> you, you want to slowly build that mm -hmm. confidence in that person that you are a person that they can trust. And so by doing these, what seem like silly posts based on just general information, they do two things. One is it gives them a chance to start conversing with you mm -hmm. on a non-intrusive level. Mm -hmm. You're asking them about something that's not a big deal in their lives. What's your favorite pie? What's your favorite color? Mm -hmm. Which one of these do you like best? Those are pretty safe topics, right? Yeah. But you haven't asked them, um, a really hard question like you might be asking about their self-care or something <laughs> like that, that is a more protected space for them. Mm -hmm. So that's why we start with those kinds of posts is just to get people talking to us. Mm -hmm. And we have to do that in face-to-face -face conversations and on social media, it just takes more thought and pulling ourselves back a bit on social media mm -hmm. because we don't see that person in front of us. And just like you said, we don't have what we call the social cues from that person. Right. We can't see them crossing their arms. We can't see them scowling. We can't see them leaning back or leaning forward. Mm -hmm. And we have to have a way to know how they're reacting to us. Right. And so that's part of what I do with language and things like that. I guess for somebody who depends on body language. Mm -hmm. Cause you can tell, you tell a whole lot more from somebody <laughs> by looking at them, which is why when I do these interviews, cameras on, when I work with a client, your cameras on, I'm, I'm reading your body language. It's almost Oh yeah. It's, it, it's almost it, afraid. I don't know if I'm pushing too hard. Am I not pushing? Am I giving you the more information than you need? I can tell that mm -hmm. by seeing face to face and you can't, 
in text form. That's why so many people, when texting became available, like I'd rather talk to somebody on the phone because I can, mm. I can at least hear their voice. Right. You can <laughs> misconstrue. Right. Mm-hmm. You can misconstrue in the text form. Um, and it's not that I don't enjoy the small talk. It's that in my personality, the small talk is clay and then you move into other things because I, I feel like it's not caring about the other person really oh. in the small talk of things. Right. Um, now I've had people reach out to me and this is another thing. And I want you to talk about, cause we've talked about it some, but people reach out to me and they want me to, to buy something or join them or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they act like they're my friend. They act like they're trying to build a relationship. But as soon as I say no, they never, ever, ever speak to me again. Right. And that for me irritates me. And what, what it ends up doing is that if I later end up looking for it, that person, I will never go talk to them again. I will go find somebody else because mm-hmm. that, that person right there, that's that to me is fake. Mm-hmm. And so how do you like that? How do you be that person who's not fake, who actually generally does care and doesn't drop off somebody because, well, I've got to move on. You know, you're not buying myself. I don't really care. Right. It, I'm, I'm thinking about this because what I have found is that um, connecting and building a relationship on social media or via text um, without the body cues that we have actually takes longer, I think, mm-hmm. because things are so superficial on social media. Uh huh. So it takes more work. And the way that I judge where I'm at with someone is my favorite type of question because this gives me an idea of where they're at. Mm-hmm. Or you, so I use on a scale of one to 10 mm-hmm. and, or the other day I used a multiple choice question because I did have someone who just friended me and reached out immediately and sold me, tried to sell me. Mm-hmm. And I turned around and asked her a question. And the question was, And this is something you can do, but do it with respect and kindness, knowing that they don't know this better way that we do things. Mm -hmm. Um, I just turned around and asked her, you know, um, I think it was like a multiple choice. And I said, what, what kind of results are you getting with this sort of messaging? And I gave her A, B, C, and D. I did it very respectfully. And basically she was getting very little results. And so I asked her if she would like um, an invitation to my next challenge that I'm going to be doing next week. Mm-hmm. And she, she did. She wanted more, better results. Most people want better results. Right. They just don't know how to get them. I, I chatted with a gal that this week who said her leader in her company, and a lot of it is the leadership and things, not always, had told her she had been saying, help me build my business. And the leader had said, just keep adding people on Facebook. And effective, we know that. Mm -hmm. And so really people want to know. It's not that they don't want to know. They just don't know how to find out Mm -hmm. what, how to do this. So they're doing what they think is the way to do it or what their leader thinks is the way to do it. Right. And it's not, it's not the way to do it. I hope, did I answer your question? Kind of, I'm going to go to get a little bit further. Okay. Um, so these people who are reaching out mm-hmm. just to get the sale, mm-hmm. just to get the sale and you're reading my face and you know how I feel about that. I was like, yeah. What can you say? Because they don't, I don't know whether they realize it or not, but it really makes people, because you don't care. They they don't care. 
so what do you do? What do you, what are you telling them? Well, and I'm repulsed by it. And so Mm -hmm. it takes some, some inner work on my part (laughs) to not slap them or slam the door in their face. Right. Because it's, it does make people angry that it brings out the anger. It brings out the, you know, in people. And, um, I, I think I would just ask, may I ask you a question? And then I would ask them in a very nice way on a scale of one to 10, how great is this working for you? And when they tell you, then you can say, um, may I suggest something else, a different method, or may I suggest that you get in contact with my friend? Okay. That's something that I can do. I can't give them advice on how to do it, but I can say, you need to talk to my friend, Myrna. Mm-hmm. You just need to talk and, to my friend, Myrna. Yep. And I always ask permission. May I ask you a question? May I make a suggestion? And it seems slow. It seems old fashioned, but we're not used to people asking us permission. We're used to people throwing us a, a link that we didn't ask for. We're used to getting information poured down our throat that we didn't ask for. And if we ask people, they're more likely to say yes. And when they do say yes, we need to have the mindset of how can I best serve this person? Is it with my product or my service, or do I know someone I should refer them to? Because not everyone is our customer. Not everyone is our right fit client. Not everyone is our right fit team member. And if we go into it knowing that we don't need everyone we come in contact with and that there are millions of people in this world and that there is a person out there that can provide what they need, Mm -hmm. it may or may not be us. It it, It reduces that stress of that we have in our minds of, I need this sale. Mm-hmm. Because God mm-hmm. is the one who gave us these gifts, these businesses that are gifts mm-hmm. to share with other people. And he provides our needs. So he is bringing the right people to us. Mm-hmm. And I might not be the right person to help someone who needs to work with you. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I need your help myself and vice versa. And so questions, genuine, respectful questions are the way we find out what people need. What is their pain? How can we serve them? Does my product serve them? Or does Samantha's product serve them? So are you recommending that you keep kind of like a, a list of what other people do so that you can? Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, I, I kind of keep it in my head mm-hmm. of what, you know, who I know, who does what, and I'm happy to refer people for other things. In fact, I, I have referred my friends a lot. <laughs> That is, um, well, that's something that I've done. Uh-huh. You and I work together and I recommended you to Laura. I'm like, I can help you, but you need to go talk to Laura. She can help you with things that I can't. Exactly. Because I'm not trained to do those things. Exactly. Do you think people are afraid of that? They're afraid that if you, I mean, there's a possibility that you just decide, oh, I'm going to go work with Laura. I'm not going to work with you because she's helping me. I'm not afraid of that um, because I can't do what Laura does. I can't do what right. you do. We, we, even if it's someone else who helps with social media, mm-hmm. I am not the best person for everyone. I am the best person for the, for my right fit client. Mm-hmm. And if they're not my right fit client, then I really need to help them find their person if I have that resource available to them, I feel like that's, um, as Christian business women, Mm -hmm. don't we want to serve them? 
Don't we want to provide them the best? And the thing is, what's going to happen? They're going to refer their friend to us. Uh huh. Oh, you should go talk to Myrna. She's not going to sell you unless, or, you know, she's not going to sign you up her program unless it fits. You should go talk to Samantha because Samantha has this great program for moms who really need her help. Mm -hmm. And it's not because we've pushed them into our programs because we needed the sale. It's because we held them loosely mm -hmm. and guided them in a loving manner. I had somebody that I watched a week long of, of a uh, webinar that she did. And she and I got on a call and we were just talking and she said, look, you are not ready for my big high ticket program but I have this thing over here that might interest you. Mm -hmm. And that opened me up to listening mm -hmm. to what she had to say, because right. it was not about her and her sale. Mm -hmm. It was about me. It builds trust. <laughs> it builds trust when we make it about serving the other person. So yesterday I made a post about coffee. I saw that. Found Unsplash a great place to get free pictures. And I sent it to Myrna and she's like, you need to put letters on that. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll put letters on it. So I put the letters on it and put it up. See, I'm grumbling. She, she puts up with a lot out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I put the letters up. Um, I got a few comments. So, okay. They put up what they like, which coffee they like. Now, what am I supposed to do? Because it's like, okay. You told me which color coffee. Okay. Now what? Now you, that's the start of your conversation. You have just started a conversation by asking them what, how, what they like, how they like their coffee. Basically the colors of the <laughs> coffee went from barely Brown, barely tan all the way to black. It looked like and milk, not coffee. It did. It looked like my husband's <laughs> coffee, actually. I think I told you that that was his coffee that A, what was his? Milk with a dab of coffee. <laughs> yes. And his is actually cream with a dab of coffee. But you've started a conversation. You've opened the door just, just a little bit. And you've just started a conversation about coffee. So they answer you. Mm -hmm. And and then you're going to respond to their comment that they've given you. So a good question would be, um, you could follow up. I always like to follow up with an affirmation, a word of affirmation about mm -hmm. what they've responded. Like, yeah, I understand that. Or that's awesome. Or that's how my friend likes it or something like that. And then ask another question to learn more. So with the coffee, you can ask, do you prefer coffee beans that you grind yourself or fresh or ground from the store? Or are you a gourmet coffee person or are you a Folgers girl? <laughs> you know, you can ask simple little questions like that. And it's more of that opportunity to just get to know them and them you. And so if you share just tiny bits about yourself in there, with those words of affirmation mm -hmm. and then ask them questions. You're having a conversation. No, I went through and I hearted everything everybody said. But Good. Coffee, coffee isn't part of my niche. So I have not responded. I don't know. I don't know how to cross that bridge between coffee and dealing with a mom with burnout, unless I'm like, how many cups do you drink? A and day. you can that. Or, in, in or the, are you a one pot, a one cup, a one pot or a two pot person? <laughs> <laughs> but there were, there were other times, like, uh, I posted, what was it? Peach pie or apple pie. It has nothing to do with self-care and dealing with burnout. And so when people commented, I heard it, but I couldn't bridge that. So mm -hmm. how first off, why should I post something that's not going to be able to bridge? Mm -hmm. And I know you're going to tell me that I need to. So I'm going to ask the other part of the question now, how do I create that bridge? Because when you tell me to do it, I'm looking like, 
I don't know. I'm doing it because you tell me to, not because it makes sense to me. Exactly. So, <laughs> so how do you do that? The way you do it is you start that conversation with a word of affirmation to say something like, wow, I, I get that. Or I have someone else that I know who feels that way <laughs> or, um, you know, they, let's say they choose peach pie. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's your favorite pie. And so you say, yep, that's my favorite too. Or you can always say, I'm a pecan girl, but I want to know what it is you love most about peach pie. And it's because you're bridging that to what you offer because you've got to start at that most unintrusive area, peach pie. And then when you make a post about self-care, they know you're going to have a conversation with them. They know that they already know you a little bit. You like peach pie. They do too. It's something in common. You have bridged that gap already by doing these engagement posts and then when you ask a question about on a scale of one to ten how um what would you ask samantha or what do you include a pillow fight as self-care <laughs> <laughs> you know they're gonna one thing you're doing is you're training them to answer mm -hmm. the question but you're also responding. They know to expect a conversation from you. They know you've already conversed with them and they're not gonna be surprised when you respond to the post about self-care that they've responded to already. You're gonna have conversations with them and then you're gonna take it to messenger and they're not gonna feel like you're just friends with them for the sale because you've been friends with them talking about mm -hmm. peach pie, talking about coffee, and you uh -huh. have slowly built that friendship. It is not an overnight success. It is the slow road to China, but it is so worth it because you're also working on the more engagement you get on that post about peach pie, mm -hmm. the more your posts are going to get pushed out to that person's friends, the friends on your list, their friends are going to see it. And it gives you more people to be having that conversation with. So don't expect a quick turnaround. It is a slow process. So the least intrusive thing, and then you're going to weekly or something like that, you're going to ask a post about self-care or whatever you're working on. And, and then you can slowly work with that person. Um, if, if your post is a qualifying post, you want to talk about qualifying posts a little bit so we can talk about the difference between it and engagement? Probably need to explain it first before we start talking about it. <laughs> okay, so an engagement post is something to get people to engage on. Mm -hmm. So it's the least intrusive thing. How many pillows do you have on your bed? How many pillows do you have on your bed? How many daughters do you have on National Daughters Day? How far do your daughters live from you? Things like that. Where Things are you from? Mm hmm. So, so that I'm not gathering your personal information, <laughs> you know, because people are worried about that on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so that's an engagement post. A qualifying post is one that you post to see their level of interest in what you have to offer. It's not an in your face post. It, it let's say if it was skincare or makeup or something like that, um, you could ask, um, do you clean your, do you use cleanser in the morning and in the evening or what do you use for cleanser? Is it just soap and water, just water? Um, or is it an actual cleanser? Things like that, that you can find out something that you can have a conversation with them about, about your product or service. Does that make sense? Or did I explain it? Well, that post that I made that you and I spent a lot of time because there was 400 comments on it on a scale <laughs> of one to 10, how burned out are you? Yes. And so 
you weren't part of that group. So you're over, I'm like messaging you and sharing my screen and you're saying, and we're both like, wow. Yeah. And I think we worked on it for two or three hours. And then I'm like, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. And, we're a, and then the next morning, my phone's going, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> ah, okay. Have birth- <laughs> <laughs> so I had those conversations. We, uh-huh. we did those. And I had some people that I had conversations with. But then there's that transition uh-huh. of you carry on the conversation and I think it's going well, but then they just stop communicating. Uh-huh. And so somewhere in that process, you lose the connection. Or I even had some people say, uh, no, I'm not, in- I don't even want to hear about anything you have to say about your stuff. And then they block you and you're like, whoa, you were telling me that you have this issue and I want to help you with this. Mm -hmm. That transition part is hard for a lot of people. It is really hard. And there's a big difference too, between people that you have gotten into your circle, Mm -hmm. like on your profile, on your business page and a group you have versus a big group. I think that was somebody else's group, right? Yes. Yes. And, and and that's much harder because you haven't had that opportunity to let's, let's use the word woo. You haven't wooed them. You know, you haven't gone through that process of asking them these other questions and things because it's a group where there's mompreneurs probably, right? And you're asking your question and it's really difficult. It is. And they are also used to selling and being sold. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're going to have a wall. Right. And that wall is hard to breach. It is Mm -hmm. hard to breach. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe if we did it again, we would ask them if they would like to join a group that you had or something. And then you could walk through that whole process of them getting to know you better and things like that. Well, a lot of groups have a no poaching policy, as they call it. Exactly. Exactly. So you can't really go in and talk about your group. No. And so do you know what the solution is to that? Tell me. You, you bring your friends list. And you continue connecting with people in a very genuine way in those groups. So you're in a group and someone posts about something you're interested in homeschooling or something Uh and, um, or vacationing at the beach and you start a conversation with them in the comments of that post, Mm -hmm. just a genuine conversation. And over time you get to know that person. Mm-hmm. And as you become friends with them, you invite them to your profile, ask them if you can be friends mm-hmm. as a friend. And then if they start seeing some of your posts, you can invite them to your own private group or to your business page. If you have one, it's, it's, again, it is not, you know, we think of Facebook or other social media as being really fast right. and sometimes it is. And it is faster than some things, but you're not just speed dating, speed dating or casting a net and pulling all these people in. And then they're yours. It, it takes time and effort. And we really have to pull ourselves back from the idea of speed dating, because that is what we've been trained to think social media is. Okay. So I'm a mom. I've got business. I've got children to take care of. I've got a house and don't forget the husband because God forbid you get too busy doing other things and not take care of the husband. It's right. just, it's the reality of life. I don't have time. And this is what I've heard from people say, I well, don't have time to develop relationships. It is a challenge for busy moms and, um, busy moms are everywhere. They're in direct sales. They're in, uh, coaching businesses. They are doing so many things. They're working full-time jobs. They're taking care of the home, the kids, all of that. And I understand completely. And there's two things that I 
suggest. And one is something that I used for years and kind of got off track with and have recently gotten back on track with is a daily method of operation. So your day, you need to choose how it's going to start and set aside time for different things. Even if you have to get up 30 minutes earlier, which I know as a mom, most of us are exhausted <laughs> already, but if you have a business, you've committed to build relationships. Mm -hmm. it's, it's part of business because if we serve people in our business, we got to have people. That means we got to build relationships. The other thing is this, and people are going to laugh at this probably. Um, I, when I first got started in direct sales, people would say, these women would say to me, I'll just do it in the nooks and crannies of your day. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? I, I don't know what that is. I, I don't know what that is, but I've learned what it is. We all go to the bathroom and we all take our phones with us, except maybe Samantha, whose kids are with her in the bathroom. <laughs> Actually, every, every mom has kids in the bathroom with them unless they're teenagers. And sometimes even then they're in the bathroom with you. But if you're at work and you go to the bathroom, or if you're um, if you just have a moment where you can get in the bathroom and lock the door, you can do five minutes worth of work while you're going to the bathroom. And that's what they mean when they say um, to fit it in the nooks and crannies of your day is to take those moments. Um, I used to always have something in the car with me when I commuted to work and um, always had something I could do. <laughs> You know, because you're going to get stopped at a stoplight, right? Right. So that's two minutes right there, probably, that mm -hmm. you can do something. So um, I got in the habit of carrying a book with me. Yes. So that's I've, a good I've thing. always lived near trains. Mm -hmm. So you get the train, inevitably, the train's going to stop you. Or one of the things I learned when my oldest was little, he would nap. And of course, not nap at home, he's going to nap in the car. And I had the choice of either getting him up and waking him up or um, just sitting in my car. And so mm -hmm. I would bring a book and I would sit and read while he was asleep in the car. And th those are those are the nooks and, and crannies of things. Mm -hmm. So we talked about how to build time. But if I'm going to be honest, sometimes it's not time. Sometimes it's emotional energy because mm -hmm. building That's relationships real. re require emotional energy that you expend onto people because you want to expend good energy and then mm -hmm. the space for them to, for, for them to be able to talk to you because sometimes I'm sorry, I'm tired. That's why she's asking about taking the phone to the bathroom. I'm like, no, I don't take the phone to the bathroom. I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to go to bed. Leave me alone, people. But I have children talking to me all day long. Uh -huh. So how can we, how can we get that balance of, okay, I've posted this engagement post and now I don't want to talk to anybody because <laughs> I'm tired. Well, and that is hard because, especially if you're an introvert, because the introvert in us, and I'm one of those two deep down inside, even though people don't know that maybe, but we have to have that quiet time to regenerate and to refresh. And if we don't have it, we're exhausted feeling. And we, this, this is going to sound hard, but it's going to go back to what you do, Samantha. And that is we have to find that those times during our day, we need to set aside 10 minutes between things mm -hmm. to have that time for ourselves. So if we have a call with a customer or someone, then we need to be sure and schedule an extra 10 minutes between those things so that we can have that time to get ourselves back and to be ready to talk to the next person. And it's really hard as a mom. I get it. It's, it's a priority though. Make your a priority because and and Samantha will tell you this if if you're not at your best you can't serve anyone your kids or your customers and 
and it's key. And I've learned this this year, you know, I, <laughs> I spent a month on the couch because I wasn't taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. And now when I feel that feeling, come on. And of course I'm at a different place in my life. I don't mm-hmm. have kids at home anymore, but now when I have that time come, when my brain just shuts down on me mm-hmm. and I feel like I just need to go inside myself, I just, I lay down. Mm-hmm. I just stop and I lay down for 10 minutes. I set a timer so I don't go to sleep because otherwise I'm going to sleep. <laughs> and and then I, I'm refreshed. And sometimes I play really soft music, just instrumental. So I'm not mm-hmm. listening to words. Um, but take those times for yourself. And that even can be done in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're stopped at a stoplight, turn on some music. If you're in the car by yourself, that can be a good time to listen to some music or an uplifting um, podcast or something mm-hmm. that's going to encourage you. Because well, you need that encouragement poured into you too. And I found that even sometimes I don't want to hear anything. Mm-hmm. And yes. Because the, the noise is constant. And if you're at that season of life where the noise is constant, especially when your kids are listening, you, you've got constant input, the TV, the children, the, the laundry, mm-hmm. the, the laundry dinger going off and the, the stove going off and oh, great, I'm burning something on the stove while the stuff in the <laughs> oven's going off the dinger. And then there's some child screaming you have so much input. Sometimes the best thing is to shut it all off. It really is. One of the things that I do between talking to clients is I will go outside and step Mm -hmm. into the grass barefoot. Yeah. And just kind of release all that pent up energy. You know, the whole electromagnetism, just pulling it out of my feet and into the ground. So freeing myself of all the things that I dealt with to be open and ready for the next thing. And social media seems to be one of those things of, oh, we can just put it off. We can just put it off. We can just put it off. It's not, not a big deal. I'll get to it. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is something that sure I can get to it, but to be successful at it, I have to give 1% every day to it. You- you have to make it part of every day. Yes. It, it has to be scheduled into your day. Even if you only spend half an hour on it, it is so important because especially now in the time we live in, because we're not seeing people as much in a social setting. Mm-hmm. It is our social setting. And no matter how you feel about that, it's reality. Mm-hmm. And we, we need to, it's, it's actually there. It just is us taking advantage of the opportunity and using it in a way that isn't offensive to other people. And uh, I was going to say something else, but I'm not going to, (laughs) I changed my mind. (laughs) Um, from my perspective and you and I both work with Katie Mm-hmm. Katie says you're not your avatar and I'm like yeah well the people I work with tend to be more like me they, they just they tend to be more like me because it's the kind of people you attract mm-hmm. um, I've noticed especially in direct sales and talking to people and talking to them about their teams and say what are the dynamics of your team usually they're the same gender the same mm-hmm. age the same season of life the same um about the same socioeconomic, usually the same political side, maybe even the same religion. Uh-huh. Um, and so you, your people generally are like you. Uh-huh. So if I'm someone who, and I just talked to somebody earlier today, who's like, I hate social media. I hate <laughs> it. I don't want to be on it. Um, I don't want to see the drama. I, I don't want to see people's opinions about anything and everything. Mm-hmm. I don't want to waste the time on it. How can you help them when all they see is it's emotional 
because mm-hmm. that, that, that waste of time is an emotional mindset. How can they get past the I hate social media mindset? Well, and one thing that it is an emotional mindset is because it's draining. Negativity is draining. And um, I don't know about anybody else, but it, it only takes just a, a teeny tiny drip of negativity for me to go down that road too. And part of it is protecting our brains, protecting what we put in ourselves our, on our own to help keep our mind in a good place. Huh. And also, I'm going to say something controversial. You don't have to stay friends with drama people or the negative people. I, I, I know that's a shock, but... <laughs> But really, you can you can hide their posts if if it's a family member and you don't want to do something more drastic. Um, you can there's something where you can um, what is it? It's called something where you can hide their stuff for like thirty days, and and take a break and see if maybe you want to just quit following them altogether. Those kinds of things are so important. It's just as important as taking that time for yourself as you've got to, it's your profile. It's your social media newsfeed. You choose what's on it and you'll be thankful you did. And so that's one part, clean up what comes to you and you can't keep all of it out because Mm -hmm. I get stuff all the time. Also, here's something that happens. If you see one, um, I'm trying to think like a tabloid kind of story come across your newsfeed Mm -hmm. and it's something that interests you and you click on it, you're going to see more of those. Yeah. Know that, just know that because that's how it works. That's how things work. You're targeted. I'm sorry, but you are. (laughs) It is a fact of life that those clicks are followed or um, monitored and that's how you get content. Mm -hmm. So choose the content you click on, choose carefully. The other thing is to look at social media as a tool, just like you look at money as a tool. It doesn't, um, social media is not our life. It is a tool we can use. And it's up to us to choose to use it, to choose how we use it, and to choose how we look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a comment that I've heard is every time I post something, a friend or family member makes a nasty comment. And I can't remove them because if I do, they're going to know. So now what am I supposed to do? Well, there are a couple of things you can do. You can, you can hide their comment. The other, oh, here's a cool thing too. Um, We have a lot of power with Facebook, even though it doesn't feel like it. Mm -hmm. You can choose who sees your posts. Ooh. You can choose close friends. I mean, you can actually choose who sees each, each post. So use the power it's given you. The other thing you can do, and I've seen um, others do this, and that is to take that negative comment and turn it into a story to use for your business or your social media. Make it a positive. So you can do those three things. You can choose who sees it. You can, if possible, hide the comment or delete it it's your post Mm -hmm. (laughs) or you can use it to your better turn it to a positive if it's negative you turn it to a positive another thing that i've dealt with and this is something that for me is a real thing i don't want to talk about my family and my personal life it's i don't want to i gotta keep my kids safe Mm -hmm. i have a special needs child i am not talking about it Mm -hmm. um And there are people who have said, well, you can't make a connection unless you just air all of your dirty laundry. So how am I going to make a real connection 
but keep my family safe from the nasty people that are out there because you know they're out there oh they are they're out there in droves <laughs> and they're watching for your kids uh-huh um, i think i would do it very carefully um my kids are adults they one of them has no social media accounts <laughs> and that's a choice because they don't mm -hmm. want to deal with it um the other thing is choose carefully what you post if you post pictures of your kids post the back of them not the front you don't want them recognizable at a young age right um the other thing is to not give don't give information away that you wouldn't give to some creepy person you know you're not going to say i'm at walmart in xyz city for the next two hours and I've got my kids with me and they're all over the store. That's not a good thing to post, right? Because you're inviting people to come find your kids. <laughs> so, so be very thoughtful and intentional about what you post. If you want to tell a story about your kids, change their names. Or say my youngest, my middle, my oldest. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to tell their gender. You can keep it vague without losing the story, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, I, I actually have one friend and you have the same friend who has kind of assigned different names to their kids and their, their labels basically about that kid's personality. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And that's yeah. what they call them on social media. Mm -hmm. And that, that is huge. That's a, I thought that was yeah. a fantastic idea. When I talked to Crystal Payne about that, that's like number one or two interviews in this podcast, the, the first or second interview, not the highest number of oh. listens. <laughs> um, her book was that one of her children wanted to commit suicide. She's, she's got two girls and a boy, but nowhere in that book does she tell gender or which child it is to protect that child because i'm gonna tell you something those of us who grew up before the internet was a thing mm -hmm. we were lucky nobody knows about all the crazy stuff we did thank goodness um now that it's you know once it's on the internet there's this thing called wayback machine it's waybackmachine.com or or org you look it up and you can see like my first blog i can go back there and see my blog post from that blog that is gone <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, once it's there people it does not go away it just it doesn't mm -hmm. um the other th one other thing that i've heard is people say what if you know people only comment about stuff about my family and then ignore everything else that i post they could be posting a positive quote or something encouraging mm -hmm. and all of that gets ignored um and that gets ignored, you know, the stuff they're trying to feed people to encourage people gets ignored, but you post something about it and it's talked okay. about. It, it really is. Um, something about your family, your pet is one of the most um, responded to things because people connect with that. It's, um, it's something that they understand, they relate to it. And so if you can tell a story without giving away too much information about your kids, I would do it um, or your husband or how you resolved an issue or how they resolved an issue, but, but protect your kids. That's, that's our number one job as a parent <laughs> is to protect our kids. So they'll comment on those, but then they ignore Mm -hmm. it's a positive quote or a scripture nothing mm -hmm. deadpans and you're over here going wait a minute and i'm nothing mm -hmm. so you're trying to build that because you can't i mean you could yeah. just talk about your family all the time but you have a business to run okay mm -hmm. nobody has time to do all of those things how do you cross that bridge of getting them to interact with those other things by becoming 
building those connections in their comments from the family post. So start with the fan, like if it's a family post and they've commented on it, start building that conversation in the comments, you know, ask them about their family, just very general questions that that is not going to give too much away to them or about their kids so that you can do that. Steven, this is where we need to edit because Marta's got to go take care of her dog. <laughs> Being with social media is a full-time job i mean there yeah. are people who make a full-time job out of it uh -huh. so i don't have time okay and i know if it's a priority you'll have time but a lot of these people that you're talking to are moms with little kids and whether they physically have time or emotionally have time they yeah. don't feel like they have time so if we're going to break it down on the minimum things they can do, mm -hmm. biggest bang for their buck, what are three things that can work for them? Well, one thing, one thing is to know that it's okay not to post 15 times a day. If you post once a day or once a week, do it consistently. Do what you can do, but do it consistently. So post twice a week or three times a week, but you don't need to post more than once a day and do it when you have the time to respond. So if you're going to have 30, a 30 minute block and 30 minutes before that 30 minute block, make your post, schedule your post ahead. That's something too. So what did I say? Don't post every day if you and don't post over and over a day. That's the first one. Um, be consistent and schedule your posts. So there are powerful things that we can use in Facebook and in other third party apps that we can use for posting. And if we use those and get in the habit of using those, then that helps us with our time because the schedule if you can go in and schedule posts and you schedule your posts to hit let's say you have a 30 minute block at nine o'clock every day or at noon you can schedule your post to hit your your page or whatever and at 11 30 and then you know at noon you're going to be able to respond to the comments because you wanna respond as soon as possible to people's comments while they're still online to kind of get them in a conversation. Mm -hmm. So schedule your posts 30 minutes before you're gonna be available. It just takes some thought and figuring out your calendar, which I know is a pain, but we've got to do it. <laughs> she gave me a look. <laughs> okay. So here's your question. She was like, what do you mean my tripping up question? Here it is. Um, because this is a big thing for me. It's an irritating thing for me. I try to be very up encouraging, uplifting, promoting people to take care of themselves, to love themselves, to have a good relationship with God, to become the best version of themselves. And there are times where I get absolutely nothing, no engagement whatsoever. And I'm scrolling through to comment on other people's things and then I see this person just ranting they're doing a video or they're ranting and they'll get two or three hundred comments and likes and I'm like what in the world mm -hmm. what in the world it's discouraging mm -hmm. and I don't want to do it anymore if I have to be somebody who rants to get engagement I don't want to be that person. 
supposed to deal with this emotionally. I know the first thing you're going to say is don't compare yourself to other people. And I get it. And I know it's true. Okay. I teach it all the time. I know it's true. But I have my emotions that I have to deal with. And I'm putting in the effort. I'm putting in the time. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to build relationships. Mm -hmm. And no matter what I do, I'm not getting the engagement. But this person over here is ranting about the checkout lady or the waitress or whatever. And people are all over it. What do I do? It is a frustrating thing. First, I'm going to say that I see it and I get it. Um, what sells news papers and things is news and it's drama and ranting and people love negativity. And so I think the best thing you can do, there's two things. One is to know it's that way, just to know. The other th there's three, I guess. The other thing next is to know those people responding to that, they ain't your people. They're not. The third thing is to use negative stories that have things that have happened in your life that were the worst thing ever and turn it into a good story that you can tell once a week or something like that to to share with people so that they will respond and they will see you as a person i just i thought of a a crazy thing that happened one thanksgiving in my family we were at my grandparents we had this huge table food was all on the table and then as a collective unit everybody there decided oh we forgot to pull the table out so we pulled the table out it crashed, all the food went on the floor. <laughs> Things broke, it was a terrible thing, but it's something that we as a family, we don't see each other that much. I see my aunt once a year and every time I see my aunt and uncle, that is a topic of conversation <laughs> because <laughs> we survived it. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> it was an awful thing at the time because it was Thanksgiving dinner, it was the end of the world at that moment. Mm -hmm. But we turned it into something fun and we survived it. And when you survive the hard things, then it, it builds connection. Hard things build connections. And if you can build connections using the challenges you've had in your life, mm -hmm. that builds a really strong connection because I'm going to respond to you better on a post about apple pie or pillows or whatever, if I've seen, and I may not respond on your post, but if I've seen that you have the same challenge with your kids that I do, mm -hmm. if, if I have kids who are struggling in X, Y, Z, and you have a kid struggling in X, Y, Z, that's a connection. I can relate to that. And I see that you understand it. Then I, I kind of want to be your friend. I want to know how you're handling it. Okay. Does that help? So I can do the rant with the rant. It grabs the attention, but what builds the connection actually that, that the connection is the rant because they get it. But the important thing is how I'm overcoming it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's, it's that thing of you can share the negative, but share how you turned it around, how you made it a positive in your household. Okay. That makes, that makes all the difference because I, I want to build that engagement mm -hmm. that this person has, but I'm not being able to do it. Okay, you, everybody. I'm just going to say you have a great knack for doing those things, for taking that negative and turning it into a good, a good post. So thank you. I'm going to do, we're going to do one more thing. So everybody can kind of see how Myrna works. I have this picture that I found. It's of a Lego figure, a, a woman Lego figure, and it's broken all over the, it, it's like the picture is just the Legos all disassembled. And so I thought about posting, ever felt overwhelmed like the Lego figure. And 
it's not a bad question, but I know I've been taught well enough to know it's not a great question. Right. So if I am wanting to talk about mm-hmm. and wanting to talk about feeling like the Lego figure, <laughs> because there, I will tell you right now with all the stuff I've had going on this week and packing and, and, and homeschooling and all the things, by the time I go to bed at night, I feel like the Lego figure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but in the morning I put myself back together <laughs> and I get on with my life. What question, what is a great question that I can put with that Lego figure that is going to one, get engagement two fit into my niche. Like I just told you what I want to talk about Mm -hmm. and three is going to allow me to have a conversation that I can bridge into what I want to talk about in the comments. There are a couple that come to mind. One would be how often. So how many times a day, how many days a week do you feel like this lady and the, the lady, the Lego lady? How, because people do feel that way. It, and it, it can be either one, how many times a day, how many times a week or what time of day? That would be a good one. What time of day do you feel like this? Um, I thought of something that could be kind of funny, like, um, where's the super glue? <laughs> you know? That's called craggle. Anybody <laughs> got craggle? <laughs> you know, but a good question could be, what is the super glue that holds you together till the end of the day? Mm. It could be their, their time in the morning with God. It could be, you know, whatever self-care they've done. I, so yeah, once I get on a roll with questions, I can come up with lots of <laughs> So I'm putting the question on the graphic. Mm-hmm. It needs to be small, right? To fit on the graphic. Um, not necessarily. Um, show me your picture so I can, or well, so is your Lego lady, the full picture? Is she the whole thing? Pretty much. Yeah. There's just a little bit of room at the top. I could probably fit a small sentence up there. Okay. So there's a really cool thing that you can do, um, with Canva. I use Canva a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is you can take, go into the elements and get a shape, um, an oval or a square or triangle Mm -hmm. and, turn it to a really like a, a light gray color uh-huh. and um, turn down the, what do you call that? The saturation of it so uh-huh. that it's through. And if it's a triangle, I like to use like a 90 degree triangle and put it in one of the corners and put my mm-hmm. question in the corner or on the, on the triangle. Mm-hmm. Or if you do like an oval or something, you can do it over the picture. If people can see it through through that shape yeah so there's some things you can do to make it work because as small the small print on social media we have to keep in mind most people are on their phones right and they need to see that question right to and and most of us are in a hurry when we're looking through and so you want it to be something that's going to be visible and you want them to see the picture so they get the whole thing at once so the other thing you can do is, is repeat that question in the text above the picture. Okay. One thing that I thought is if I can shift it over a little bit, put in a, um, a text bubble. Yes. You can so do that. And put that in there. Like that's what she's thinking. How did this happen? <laughs> that would be a great place to put anybody that got craggle. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the lego movie it it was all about be wary of the craggle (laughs) because yeah it was crazy glue that kind of got smashed together to make craggle well thank you myrna for your time there is a lot of really great ideas here and as i tell you guys this is as much for me as it is for you um because when these women come here they all have things to share just like you have things to share so um 
that is where we're going to end today. And I will talk to you guys next time.